All right, guys, my next guest is a soldier and entrepreneur. And she turned $2,000 into $50,000 in revenue in the first year of her business. Uh, name of her business is so expressive. I love it. Y'all have to see the way she spells it. Uh, it gives you confidence, value, and quality at traditional retail prices. And she wants you to get your ass off the fence as it relates to branding and building awareness. And guess what, guys? We're getting one-on-one with her right now. Erica Kelly. Hey. How you doing? Nice to finally meet you. Yeah. Where you been hiding at? I haven't been hiding. I've been here. Waiting right. for the show to start. Waiting for the party. It's nice <laughs> getting to know Raven a little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> and where is here for you? Well, I'm here at um, Fort Eustis in Virginia. That's where I'm currently stationed. Okay. That's right. You're a soldier in the army. I thought they were saying like a soldier in the army of the Lord or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're a real soldier. I'm a real soldier. Okay. Okay. Now, how long have you been in uh, the uh, military? I've been in the military 19 years now. My life. Okay. 19 years. a long time. You look like you're about 19 right now. Okay. I like that. I, I how, like how, that how, how did they do that? Like they, they took you at birth or something? <laughs> I wish that was the case, but no, um, the army's just been really good to me. Didn't okay. Really wear off on me too bad. All right. So 19 years, uh, what inspired you to go the military route? Honestly, I joined the military, um, to learn how to cook. Honestly. To learn how to cook? Yes. Come on, Erica. You, you kidding me. You kidding me. <laughs> I am so serious. I joined the military to learn how to cook. Of all the things you could have done, culinary school, you know, military. <laughs> no, it was it was one of the things where they was like, hey, what do you want to do? What are you good at? I knew what I wasn't good at. So uh, I was like, oh, let me learn something that I'm not good at. Okay. Okay. So I have to ask, Erica, you brought this up. Okay. Okay. You joined the military to cook. What's your cooking like today? Well, I, honestly, I've had some very prestigious jobs, flown all oh. around the world with very um, prestigious people in the military um, because of my cooking. Yo, cooking has gotten you into doors that uh, you probably wouldn't have gotten yeah. in had you not been able to cook. So are you like a, a master chef of some sort? I am not a master chef, um, actually, <laughs> but I trained a lot of the master chefs that's in the army. Okay. Okay. So... You have you started out in one thing, and at some point in your life, you decided you wanted to be an entrepreneur. And what led to that? So honestly, it came to the point where I'm at 18 years of service. It's time for Erica to start thinking about what she wants to do outside of the army. And I wanted to separate, you know, Master Sergeant Kelly to Erica Kelly. And it was like, so what do you want to do? And of course, I spent a lot of money. I've invested a lot of money over the years on my uniform. All Army uniforms have embroidery on them. You find your name, um, your rank, everything's embroidered. Mm. So there's a lot of investment going back and forth, money trading hands. And I was like, it's been here all along, you know? And so I chose to dive into the embroidery field. And initially it started off with, oh, I want to sell people what I want them to have. And I realized there was a big need for um, branding and small businesses and what mm. they wanted. To put on their apparel so that was the path of still expressing so let's get this right now now you refer to yourself in third person am i to do the same yes, please, please. <laughs> so erica kelly yes. the people i will say are you the kid of r kelly no 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 can so they don't do that <sighs> she was like no please no r kelly <laughs> so, so so you saw a problem and you decided yes. to provide a solution for that problem, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, you've been taking sleeping pills today? No, none. Th this is just you? You just like cooler than the other side of the pillow, cooler than the polar bear's toenails? What, what's exactly. going on? This is me. This is me. This is how you be chill like, yeah, what's up? Like, <laughs> Erica, Erica said like she riding with Snoop Dogg, okay? <laughs> no. Nah. 
<laughs> Soft spoken, but a killer. Yep. That's exactly who I am. So 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 how many ways can you kill a person? Finch, really? I, I gotta ask, Erica. I mean <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a lot of ways to kill a person. I'm uh, saying I you really you personally, how many ways can you kill somebody? With kindness. That's how I'm gonna kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You are good, Erica. You are good. <laughs> I see somebody had media training because I was trying to slip you up, you know. Because you know these videos last forever online. Forever. Erica, like you not gonna catch me. My <laughs> master sergeant ain't gonna be calling me in the office in the morning. <laughs> Basically. Okay, so so why do you think people don't see themselves as brands even when they have businesses? Um, I would say they probably don't see themselves as brands is because they're just not recognized as a brand. They don't realize that their name is their brand. Um, in the military, I, I've created a brand for myself. Master Sergeant Kelly is a brand. Um, when people hear my name, they know who I am. Uh -huh. um, they know of my reputation. When you get a Master Sergeant Kelly, you get a promise and that's what your brand is. She, she's going to do and execute something a certain way. Mm -hmm. It could be a good brand. It could be a bad brand. And it's really all based off of perception. Uh -huh. But you have a brand. Okay. I like the way you said that. Um, yeah. You had media training before? Um, no, but I mean, we pretty much do train that's for the media all the time. So, <laughs> but not per personally media training. Okay. Because you, you got some great answers here. And they really politically correct, you know. <laughs> Literally correct. Okay, yeah. you I like know, because because I, you know, I'm the type of person in the conversation. I could take it left. I could take it right. I can take it over the hill. You know, because I listen to what people say, and I kind of base what I'm going to say to them based upon that. Sometimes I go. I ain't gonna say sometimes. Most times I'm going off script. So uh, I love the fact that you're not you're not easily rattled by my conversation. Yeah, I love no, it. Not at all. We can take it wherever you want to go, Finch. I love it, Erica. I love it. Okay, so I, I look at this because you got thousands of people, and we and we know this by all the fraudulent people who who did the PPP loan. Uh, thousands of people across the country have businesses, and yeah. most of them, whether their business, and sometimes I think it's because they consider themselves a small business. They don't see that business as a brand like an Apple or a Google or a Facebook or a Yahoo. And I think that's some of the reasons why they stay a small business because they never see themselves excelling. Now, you took $2,000 and you translated into $50,000 in your first year of business. Would you say that contribute to your mindset or sheer luck? I would say a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, I think that it has a lot to do with my brand, though, as well. So okay. um, these connections that I made through the military, I feel like that was my start. That was my handshake into the business because I would say the first three to six months that I was in business, everybody that was purchasing from me or people that knew me and knew me well, whether it had been um, one of my soldiers, a co-worker of a co-worker, you know, it was just like that mental note kept playing in their head like, oh, Sarn Kelly does embroidery. Oh, she started this embroidery business and it was just word of mouth and hearsay. So my reputation pretty much preceded me when mm -hmm. a lot of people came to me to do business. And then after I built that trust with people that I've already knew, the people that I didn't know was on board and ready to go. So you was like a young Pablo Escobar sitting in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay <laughs> i mean because you gotta think about it. you thinking about your inter your mindset is enterprising and yeah. you're, you're saying hey i know how to hit the the movers and the shakers in the circle so that i can expand and the more you yeah. did that the more relationships you made the more yeah. people knew about what you did uh what problem you solve and how you know, they could be, you could be of use to them and they could be of service to you, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. like I always consider myself like a master networker. I talk to everybody. I'm very random. I don't have to know you. I'm, I'm showing up in rooms that aren't even really supposed to be rooms. I feel like Instagram is 
Facebook, all of these um, social media platforms are just big conference rooms. You could talk mm-hmm. to anybody, pretty much tap anybody on the shoulder and say, hey, how are you today? You know, it's not even about selling them anything. It's just, you know, getting to know people, making those um, connections that matter the most. Yeah, I, I think that's true uh, because every relationship you build or break uh, could be uh, beneficial or detrimental. So, you know, and you never know who you are engaging when you engage in these conversations. And again, not that I've ever dabbled into uh, the drug uh, business, but (laughs) I use that as a, as a, a, a thumbnail, because when you look at the way they think and the way they operate, they create networks of people. And it's really just built on relationships. You know, some of those relationships are, are garnered through fear, you know, but a number of those relationships uh, are built through trust and and knowing people, knowing people in your community, knowing people, uh, knowing what people need or in and around you. And so I applaud that. That's your approach when you're looking at how you start building your brand. So so that you got to tell people how you spell it because they don't know it's not on the screen. Oh, yeah. Well, it's somewhat on the screen, but yes, so this is your name. So yeah, tell me how you spell your business. So the app is I'm So Expressive, and you can find me on all social media platforms, but I spell it S-E-W, Expressive. So the name of my business is So Expressive LLC, but you can find me on all social media platforms at I'm So Expressive. So so do, do, do those people think at times that you do sew-ins, weaves? You know what? I haven't got that at all. Nope. But I can see how those two can relate. Um, and they probably come across my page looking for a sewing or weave because when yeah. you put in sew, I can, I'm pretty sure I pop up. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, so she do weaves and then on the side, she got like some t-shirts in the bag and she, you know, you know that's what I thought. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't do any sewings or weaves. I mean, I can, but I don't. That's not oh, okay. You you have the ability. So let's, let me make sure I'm, I'm understanding this. You cook masterfully. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do sew-ins, braids, uh, you know, what's that? Um, what's the other little hairstyle they come up with? You do like the, uh, what those wigs that had a little uh, stuff at the front that look like the head of pillin'? Um, I do not know how to do those, but I will say I am a master sergeant for a reason. I am a master in a lot of different skills. <laughs> so, so ma- let's talk about that for a second. Master sergeant. That says quite a bit. That's a pretty hefty title. Um, I'm not a military man. My father was military. My oldest brother was military. I was in ROTC, uh, if that counts. Uh, but I didn't want to take it beyond that because, you know, I didn't like the people that you got, y'all got to blame the, the people that my school that, that yelled at me a lot. I didn't like that. So I didn't go into the military. But being a master, when you're looking at mastering something, what did it take for you to become a master sergeant? I would say networking um there's not a person in the army that i had who has touched my life that i can't call and ask the question um a lot of things i do not know and i have man my network is great um i'm pretty mm. sure there's many people that's watching this podcast right now from my network um i have accountability partners and i have mentors um, that helped me get to where I am today. So I would say my mentor shaped and molded me to become the person that I am today. And that's why I'm here as a master sergeant. Okay. So let's talk about mastering people at home who are on the fence about they haven't discovered if they are themselves a brand, they they don't know. They're on the fence. So the number one secret. Uh, well, I ain't going to say like number one is in rank, but one of the secrets you have is about people, how you select a logo, right? Right. Why is that so important, Erica? I think it's very important because um, when selecting a logo, some people um, don't think of the bigger picture, like mm-hmm. what they're going to put this logo on. It's like, oh, I do nails or um, I create fruit. So I want my logo to have all this fruit in it so people know <laughs> um that I do fruit, but that's not necessarily the case. You don't necessarily have to have all this abundance of fruit in your logo for people to know that you do fruit. Um, You have to build a brand that you want people to remember. So it doesn't matter what your logo is. Um, Mm -hmm. 
the word, we'll just use the word Adidas or Nike, for example. Most of the time, we don't even know what that is mean. But when we see their emblem, mm -hmm. that's one little small icon, you know exactly who they are. And neither one of them brands show shoes. Uh -huh. They don't limit themselves to um, a shirt. Uh, apparel is not in their icon. So you don't necessarily need that. So when I think of a logo, I always think about, okay, how are you want to wear this logo? Do you want to wear it on a polo? Do you want to wear it on a t-shirt? Um, so when you're building it, you know what kind of like what right looks like. If you never plan to have it embroidered, it's fine. You can make your logo look however you want because mm -hmm. you can get it screen printed or um, you can get it pressed. You have so many options um, as far as printing. When it comes to embroidery, logos that are very, I guess you could say detailed, you don't want to have a small um, logo with a bunch of details because it's not going to show it right in embroidery. The selection of your logo is critical. It's critical. Do you think that so a number of people who are just starting out or didn't have that kind of insight knowledge, is that a mistake that you see often with people? I wouldn't say it's a mistake. I think it's more of, um, it's up to me to educate them once they get to me to mm. say, hey, for this logo, I would recommend or advise you to use screen printing or sublimation or another printing source. I wouldn't want you to come and buy a T-shirt from me to embroider this small, teeny logo that has all these different details that you're only going to wear twice and it's going to get thrown in the trash. I feel like the cost value is not effective and you should probably try something different. So that's where I come in at. I'm, I'm here to help you. I <laughs> just take the money. So when you just said that, Erica, my mind went to you. You talking to folk? Go on with that little logo. That little logo. That, is that what you be doing to the people? No. That little logo. No. You don't don't come over here with that little logo. <laughs> but I do. I do ask questions. I do ask hard questions that a lot of times business owners never even think about. Um, that, that's true. I ask those questions like, "Well, what's your brand story? Tell me about your brand. Why does Erica want to buy from Off the Fence? Why do I want to wear Off the Fence?" as um, a brand. Why do I want your coffee mug, Finch? You know oh. what I mean? I see you're branded. I checked you out. Okay. You know, so if you were selling coffee mugs, why would I want to have that coffee mug? Well, you I want this coffee mug because what's in it. That's oh. what <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Got you. <laughs> you want what's in this coffee mug. You might not care about the mug, but what's in this thing, girl? What's in it? I ain't going to tell you. Okay. See? see? Uh, what's in here is love and kindness, Erica. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I'm learning. Because, <laughs> you know, my mouth is reckless most times. So, you know, I, I don't have filters. So, you know, mm -mm, I don't have filters because I don't really care what people think. So, yeah. But I'm talking to Erica Kelly today, the master. So I, I have to be respectful. Listen, this is your show. I'm here. You're hosting. You're doing a fabulous job, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right. So, so selecting your logo is something that you want to look at and brand yourself this year. Because again, if the pandemic didn't teach us anything, it taught us, hey, if you have aspirations to be an entrepreneur, this is the time to do it, or or just being a business owner, um, mm -hmm. whether you're doing it as an entrepreneur or not. So, selecting a logo is important. What's the next thing? Um, the next thing I would say would be selecting if you're going to do print or embroidery. Okay. Why is that? Because you want to dress how you want to be addressed. You know, certain things will get you into one door um, that might not get you into another door. So it just really depends on what your brand is. Everything's not mm -hmm. for everybody. And there's not, it's not like a cookie cutter, um, one size fits all. You really have to decide what your brand needs. So, that would be the second step for me, deciding if you want to go in a direction of printing or if you want to go in embroidery or if you decide not to wear anything um, branded, any branded apparel at all. OK. And for for people at home who might be watching or who will download and listen to this for the next X amount of years, um, let's say, for instance, they have an idea. And they're not able to come to you because they're not in Virginia. Uh, well, I probably should ask, how do you or do you take clients who don't live in your area? I do. I have shipped all over the world, actually, as far as Korea. 
Um, she said, so listen, I'm listen, Vince, this cocaine goes everywhere. Everywhere. You know, it's funny because a lot of my group know that I consider myself a dope dealer. You know, ah! eating opposition purposely every day. So, yes. Okay. Say that again. Yeah. What the dope stand for? Defeating opposition purposely every day. Look at Kelly out here. I, see, I knew it. I saw it in your eyeballs. I seen it. Yeah. I seen it. Yeah, I seen it. So, <laughs> Kelly, the master uh, sergeant is a underground dope dealer who deals out. What's the what's the thing? What's the thing you deal you dealing out every day? Embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> She said, I'm just dealing in embroideries. That's all. Okay. Uh, so, so in essence, the last thing you want people to know when it comes to how they brand themselves, I love this one. I'm not going to give it away because I want you to say it. What is it? You have to wear it every day. You have to wear your brand every day. Everywhere. Everywhere. Why is that important? Because you're building brand awareness. You know, it's, it probably takes about six or seven times for somebody to see something to to remember it. So the more you wear it, the more people see it. Like I know mm. exactly what your what your logo looks like, Finch. If I see it pop up on my screen, I know exactly whose logo it is. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's the same thing. I get people all the time and say, "I've been watching you for seven or eight months," and I'm like, "Really." You know, and I'm just like, you know, what my logo looks like. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, wow, that, that's pretty awesome. So it really does make a difference. So wearing your brand, um, it sparks a lot of questions. It's a conversation starter. What is off the fence? What is so expressive? Why is it spelled like that? You know, like just like you asked, do you do hair? <laughs> um, so just seeing it, um, whether you're at the gym working out and it's on your back, need embroidery. You know, like you just have to think about. Everywhere you go, you're a walking billboard. You should be rocking mm. your own brand. All right, what's your what's what's on your shirt right now? Let me see. Elevate. It. Elevate. I like that. Mm-hmm. Ah, so why the different colors in the letters? Uh, because you know, girls like girly colors. Um, this is actually my husband's brand. So, um, as far as elevate goes, the just the plain gray or white is what he usually does for the men. So he tried to. You know, spark it up so I can wear something and feel good in it too. Elevate. So, what does elevate mean? Elevate is pretty much just leveling up. You know, everybody's at this. You know, the standard we want to elevate. So, wherever you're at, whatever the standard is, you want to make sure you go greater, go higher. Go higher. Okay. So, 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 the so expressive, like, do like like bad boy records where y'all sign people and then y'all let them have their own little record labels and sign other artists too. That's what y'all doing over there. So it's expressive. Well, I mean, it, it kind of works like that. I mean, there's a lot of times where brand owners start a brand um, much yeah. like elevate and they have their own brands and they come to us and um, we work together, you know, to, to push their brands. Okay. So I'm definitely a brand ambassador for my clients. Okay. And if someone wanted to reach out to you or so expressive, how could they do that? They can follow me on all social media platforms at I'm so expressive. That's I M S E W E X P R E S S I V E. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm so expressive. Now, where are you from? I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. I was going to say, cause I just heard all, or I like that New York sounding. <laughs> No, I'm from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, okay. And military has taken you to where you are now, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Anything else you want the people to know before we live out of here? You are your brand. You are your brand. Yes, you are. Can, can we sing that? Can we sing that? You, yes, Fitch, please. No, 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 no Erica. I, for you. I want you to sing it. I'm just going to be a, your background singer. Cause I got, I can only hold notes. I can't lead songs. Well, I'm gonna tell you, Finch. I only rap. I don't. I don't really sing too much unless it's karaoke. Let me find out. You got bars. I got bars. Let me hear some bars. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I don't rap. <laughs> That's funny. You should do stand up. No, I shouldn't. No, I shouldn't. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Erica, I appreciate you coming on the fence and uh, helping our audience get their ass off the fence. It's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you to everybody that showed up. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good. 